Hey friends, welcome back to Lila Licious. Today I'm going to show you how to make lacto-fermented cucumbers. Lacto-fermenting cucumbers is a delicious and probiotic rich way of making natural pickles without vinegar. The main ingredients are just salt, water and cucumbers. Then we need just a few more ingredients for the right texture and flavor, but of course those are adjustable to your own taste preferences. Thanks to an unusually hot weather in the early summer this year, we've had so many cucumbers in the garden and I found that fermenting them was a delicious way of preserving them to enjoy for longer. But of course you don't have to rely on your own garden and an abundance of cucumbers to make this recipe. All kinds of cucumbers from a farmer's market, farm stand, or even the grocery store can be fermented in this way. And then you can add a variety of spices and herbs and other flavoring agents to give these fermented cucumbers your favorite pickle flavor. I myself love dill pickles, so of course I'm going to add some dill and garlic to my fermented cucumbers to get a similar flavor here. First up, let's go over the ingredient list. Of course, we have cucumbers. For a one quart jar, we need about one pound of cucumbers. Kirby cucumbers are usually the first choice when it comes to fermenting and pickling, but I've also used some Persian and English cucumbers as long as they are no more than one and a half to two inches in diameter. If they're somewhat immature before the seedy and more watery center forms, they're going to be suitable for fermenting. Whenever I've used riper or more mature cucumbers, they still turn out delicious, but the texture is softer and they're not quite as crisp as you kind of expect from a pickle. And because I'm going for somewhat of a dill pickle flavor, I'm going to add one to three garlic cloves and of course dill, either a teaspoon dry, a tablespoon fresh, or just two to three whole fresh sprigs. I also add between half to one tablespoon of pickling spice. You can use a store-bought version or make my homemade mix. It includes mustard seeds, coriander seeds, peppercorns, chili flakes, cloves, some dill seeds, whole allspice, bay leaves and ground ginger. And then you mix it all up, break up the bay leaves and smash up the cloves. Otherwise everything else gets added whole and then you just mix it up. It's great for pickling or fermenting cucumbers and other vegetables too. And I also always add more bay leaves to each jar of fermented cucumbers, at least two. You can also use grape leaves if you have a grape vine in your garden. Oak leaves work as well. All of these have tannins in them and this is what is the key ingredient to keeping your cucumbers crisp while they are fermenting. We also need a clean quart sized or one liter sized jar. You can rinse it out with hot water or sterilize it. And I like to weigh my jars and note down that number. So in case I forget to tear out my scale, I can weigh it with all my ingredients and can deduct the weight of the jar. And for the brine, we need three to four teaspoons of sea salt, Himalayan salt or Celtic salt. Just don't use iodized table salt. And finally, about two cups of water. Give your cucumbers a rinse. I just wash mine off with cool water because they're from the garden. I know that they haven't been sprayed with anything. So just a cool water rinse to remove any kind of dust or dirt debris that may have landed on them. You can soak store-bought cucumbers with baking soda in the water to give them more of a cleanse. And here's my second secret to crisp fermented cucumbers, aside from adding tannins. This is to remove the blossom end of each cucumber. Even if you decide to leave them whole, cut off that like little brown dark circle at the bottom, not the stem end, but the bottom end of each cucumber. That is where the blossom used to be attached. And that part contains an enzyme called pectinase that can make the cucumbers turn mushy during the fermentation process. I also cut off the little stem part at the top, but that is optional. And now it is up to you in which shape or form you want to ferment your pickles. I'm going to show you three different options. The first one is sliced. Just slice your cucumbers into rounds of about one eighth of an inch or maybe three to four millimeters. And then fill the cucumber slices into your clean fermentation jar. For a quart sized jar, you need about one pound or 450 grams of cucumbers to fill it. We want the jar decently filled 
that way most of the slices will stay submerged. And now for my second jar, I'm going to do quarters. Again, cut off the blossom end and a bit of the stem side and then slice them lengthwise into quarters. I like to do that with some longer cucumbers that may be a bit too thick to leave whole and as quarters they're going to be still quite enjoyable. And then once sliced, pack them into your clean fermentation jar standing up. <laughs> it kind of helps to put the jar sideways a little bit and just kind of fill them as tight as possible. Again, we need about a pound of cucumbers and in the end you may need to squeeze quite a bit, but that's actually going to help you later on. When they're really tight, then they are going to hold each other in place and will not float up over the surface of the brine, which may cause some mold issues. And now for my last jar, I'm going to do a batch of just whole fermented cucumbers. Again, cut off the blossom end. I also like to remove the stem end. And then we're going to pack them tightly into our jars. Um, usually when I leave them whole, I can't fit quite as many cucumbers in there. Maybe around 350 to about 400 grams. Fill them into the jar standing up and again the tighter the better because they will hold each other in place that way. And now on to our flavoring agents. I do like garlic flavor but not a ton so I use one clove per quart size jar but I slice that one clove kind of into quarters or so. It releases its flavor better that way and then I tuck them in between the cucumber slices. Now for our tannins that will keep the cucumbers nice and crisp and crunchy, we need some bay leaves. I'm using three small ones and I tuck them in between the slices kind of along the wall of the jar. They slide in easier there. You can also use some oak or grape leaves and it looks like that then. And because I love dill flavor with my cucumbers, I'm adding a teaspoon of dry dill. I just hadn't had any success growing dill this year otherwise i would have used fresh about a tablespoon or two to three whole sprigs and then i'm adding half to one tablespoon of pickling spice mix that i've made myself at home you can also use a store-bought mix or whatever you have on hand of either mustard seeds coriander seeds it is also kind of up to you which flavors you like now let's quickly repeat the same with the other two jars Let's slice the garlic and add it into the jars and then we're going to tuck in the bay leaves and it's kind of easier when it's not slices with the quartered or whole cucumbers. There's a bit more space to tuck them in there. And now also the seasoning, the pickling spice mix, as well as the dried or fresh dill. Here's where I then sometimes bring in my scale just to double check that I have the right amount of vegetables in the jar. And I either use another jar to tear out the scale for the weight of the glass or like I showed you earlier I weigh my glasses before and then I could weigh the entire filled jar and then I just deduct that amount that is the weight of the jar. So here you can see that the entire contents weigh just over 400 grams. This includes the seasoning and spices which is close enough. Perfect. And now to make the brine, let's dissolve three to four teaspoons of sea salt in two cups of water. This will result in a salinity level of about three and a half to four and a half percent. This is a perfect range to suppress the growth of unwanted bacteria, but the lactobacillus that facilitates lactofermentation will thrive in this environment. If you are watching salt and sodium intake, definitely go with only three teaspoons. And if you like it saltier and it's good for your personal health, you can go up to four teaspoons. And in my estimation, no more than one teaspoon of salt will be absorbed by the cucumbers anyway. And now pour the salt water brine over the cucumbers in the jar. You want to use enough brine to cover the cucumbers. However, with the sliced kind, they will start floating to the top usually. So leave about an inch 
or two of headspace. That also gives enough room to add a fermentation weight or in my case I'm just using a small glass condiment dish and this will keep the slices submerged under the brine. And now tightly close the jar with the lid. And now repeat the same with the quartered and whole cucumbers. Add brine to cover them towards the top because these are tighter packed they will kind of stay in place without a fermentation weight. You can also use a spoon or something to mix the brine around a little bit so that the spices and the dill kind of get mixed in more. And now close the lids and we are ready to leave our cucumbers to ferment at room temperature. I also like to place them in a little bowl or container so that in case there is a lot of activity and some of the brine tries to escape I don't have a mess on my counter, instead it gets collected in there. You can also see that the brine starts out quite clear, but this will change over the course of the fermentation process. And I also like to check in on my jars once a day. This will also burp them, so any excess gases that I have formed can escape. And I will kind of check on them to make sure that the cucumbers are still submerged under the brine. If they start to float up, I may decide to add a fermentation weight at that point. This is what I did here with the spears as well as the whole cucumbers because as they started to ferment, although I packed them super tight, they did come loose. Here on these whole cucumbers you can actually see the air bubbles that have formed on the cucumbers after even just one day of fermenting at room temperature. Now that I've added fermentation weights on all of my jars, I can be assured that the cucumbers will stay under the brine. I will still on day two open the jars or just kind of open the lids a little bit so that any air bubbles can release because I don't want too much pressure to build up. Here you can see actually some of the bubbles releasing and that just is a clear sign of the bacterial activity in here which is perfect. And only in one jar did the brine actually bubble over and out of the jar. That's why I like to always place them in another bowl. And you can discard that, pour it back into the jar or drink it as a little probiotic booster shot. Now by day three you can see how the brine has definitely changed in color. It is more cloudy and kind of a darker, more olive green instead of the bright green. And this is the perfect time to start tasting your pickles to see if maybe they're already at the right level of tartness and fermentation that you enjoy. On warm summer days it usually only takes three days for the cucumbers to reach my preferred fermentation level. When the weather is cooler I leave them for a couple more days so after five days is usually when I like them best. As you're checking in on your fermented pickles daily, you may suddenly notice an opaque or even white film at the top of your brine. It may seem concerning, but most likely, and in this case here pictured, this is not mold, it is not spoiled, it's actually cam yeast. It is naturally occurring when you are fermenting. It's not toxic, it is not harmful, so don't worry, but I'm still going to scoop it off. And you should too, because it can affect the flavor of our pickles in a negative way. So it's not harmful, but we still want to remove it and then just simply discard. In my personal experience, I've never had mold grow on top of brine like this. The only times that a fermentation has gone moldy for me was when some vegetables or cucumbers are sticking out over the brine then mold can form on top of that part that is not submerged. But I've never had mold just floating on top of the brine. Once your fermented cucumbers are at a level that you like them, you can then just close the jar tightly and place it in the fridge. Lactobacillus goes almost completely dormant at average fridge temperatures. Your cucumbers may continue fermenting a little bit more in the fridge, but not too much. So once refrigerated, there is no need to check in on them or burp the jars anymore. And here's my finished jar of fermented cucumbers. I store them in the fridge like this for several months to up to a year if it's unopened. And once we open a jar, we try to go through it over the course of a month or so. It's just great to have a few slices in a hot dog, on a burger, alongside dinner. It's just always great. Can we try one? Let's do it.
I just love this tart, sour fermented cucumber flavor. And there's garlic in here and dill and just a little bit of fizziness because yeah, this is lacto fermented and it's full of probiotic goodness in here. I hope you're going to try this recipe. If you do, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear from you. There has been such interest in my fermentation recipes on the channel recently. So please also let me know what other recipes you want to see in the fermentation category. And I will try to work on those next. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone that you think will enjoy fermentation recipes too. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss any new videos. Bye for now.